everyone and welcome to another episode of Drinking and Reading mm. Coffee and Weird Tales mm. And Happy Halloween! It's the 31st of October 2019 <sighs> I've been a little bit crap this year but yeah, in my defence I don't really have a defence um, But you know, it's, it's, it's still early in the day and by early I mean 10 past 1 in the afternoon. There's still time. There's still time. Anyway, here we are again, and I think we're on episode 4 now of Dimensional Doors by Hans Bach. And, um, where last we left Eddie, he was, you know, I don't think much had happened. He'd gone into a room with a Slandvik, yeah. Um, and they'd looked at some picture frames with empty pictures and then something happened and it became dimensional doors to other worlds and I think Islan Vic offered Eddie, um, what did he offer him? Like a world in exchange for services of some sort. We don't know what the services are yet. Um, personally, for me, I might have told Islan Vic to fuck off and just have left but you know, Eddie, Eddie's different, isn't he? Eddie, Eddie's Different, yeah. Anyway, where are we? Hmm. Yes, so Aslanvik had a dog and presumably not a very friendly one. Eddie slid out of bed with as little sound as he could help and crept over to the door to listen with an ear pressing against the wood. Pad, pad. He knelt and squinted through the keyhole, but the hall was dark and he could not discern what was making the noise. There was no key in the lock, no bolt on the door. Evidently, the walking thing could not twist a doorknob as some dogs can, or could it? Would the chair propped against the door keep the thing out? Eddie sniffed. Aslanvik must be burning incense. There was that sharply sweet odour which he had noticed on the stairway. He returned to the bed, but still could not sleep. Lay rigid, cold shudders. Sh that shit. Cold shudders rippling through him at the slightest deviation of that rhythmic pad, pad, out in the hall. Eddie tossed restively, worried. As Landvik, incense, frames that were doors, that thing outside, he didn't like it. Well, wasn't there the window? Maybe he could drop down out of it and get the devil away from this place and not come back again. Yeah, about time, fucking about time. It took until you were locked in a room, but anyway. But when he tried the, uh, but when he tried the window, it would not open, and no wonder it had been nailed shut. Its glass was pebble surfaced. He could not see through it, so just fucking smash it. Still, he did not go to no. Still, he did go to sleep at last. At Lanvik's knock on the door woke him in the morning, though there was no light in the window. Get dressed, as Lanvik bellowed. Breakfast is ready. Eddie yawned himself awake and got up, washed, and started putting on his clothes. Out of curiosity, he opened, mm, he opened the closet door and glanced within. There was a hat on a shelf, an old coat on a hook, and a pair of neckties, in a bad shape, on the floor. They were not as Lanvik's. The coat and hat were too small for him. Eddie shut the door, finished dressing, and cautiously stepped out into the hall. The animal, whatever it had been, was no longer on sentry duty. As Landvik called genially from the kitchen, Eddie, aren't you dressed yet? The cereal's getting cold. The cereal's getting cold. Anyway, yeah. Eddie ambled into the kitchen. The table was set. As Landvik seated, Eddie joined him. <sighs> Really is a step by step. Anyway, 
Uh, pouring the coffee, as Landvik asked, well, have you made up your mind? Eddie's eyes were restless. He was sure now that if he had decided to go, that as Landvik would not allow it, he'd have to try a ruse. I'd like to stay. The coffee pot had been poised in midair while the giant awaited the answer, as Landvik set down the percolator good. Only, I'll have to go out and notify my friends of a change of address. As Landvik did not like that. Can't you mail them this address? Must you go in person? No, I think I ought to see them. Nonsense, as Landvik said with finality. I'll find you a postcard and you write them. I'll mail it for you next time I go out. He fished into a pocket. Yes, here's a card, a little soiled. He proffered a pen. I think there's ink in this. Go ahead, write whatever you like. This address is, he lifted his gaze to the ceiling. Mm, this is getting weird. In thought, 629 Oakley Street. Yes, 629 Oakley Street. Mm. He stared at Eddie, who uncomfortably, mm, excuse me, <laughs> who uncomfortably wrote on the card, as Landvik took back the pen, scanned the card, and smiled unctuously. There, simple as that. But now, eat your breakfast. We have things to do. Mm. Eddie, what did you get yourself into? Mm. After drinking, no. After dining, they stacked the dishes in the dining, dining on breakfast. You, mm. After eating breakfast, they stacked the dishes in the sink. At Landvik, as Landvik said, your chief duty here will be housekeeper. I haven't time for that. The place could stand a little going over, Eddie agreed. He was certain that as Landvik did not intend to mail the card, the giant would take no risks with his multiple locked, with his multiple locked away secret. But how to feel the man out? The bedroom was pretty dusty. There were some old clothes in the closet that ought to be thrown out. Mm. Clothes? Ah, yes, at Lan mm. Ah, yes, as Landvik said smoothly. They belonged to your predecessor. His face was blank, but his eyes probed Eddie's. I had to, uh, dismiss him not long ago. He wasn't competent or trustworthy, but you'll be competent, won't you? His tone implied, you will if you know what's good for you. Mm. Mm. Uh, ill at ease, Eddie choked as he answered, sure I will. <laughs> but I thought you were big and strong, Eddie. I thought you were a tough guy. The dishes were all stacked. Come along, as Landvik said. Turn out that light after you. He went to the room of the frames, ushering Eddie from frame to frame, unlocking each... That seems like quite a, a substantial... Tr sort of an, an unbalanced trade. You can be my housekeeper and I'll give you a, a world in another dimension. Just jump out a fucking window. <laughs> Smash a window, jump out. Yeah, anyway. Fuck. The dishes were all stacked, come along, as Landvik said. Turn out that light. After you, he went to the room of the frames, ushering Eddie from frame to frame, unlocking each of them in the same fashion with the ring which he called a key. None of the frames was alike. Some bore human figures, others animal forms. But there were so many of them that, ever no, um, that Eddie never really did get the chance to study them. The ring went into a different socket on each frame. As Landvik snapped, no, as Landvik snapped open the doorways for just a second, then closed them and moved along. Eddie had the opportunity for the merest glimpse of what lay beyond. He saw places which resembled the forest, no, the frost forests of winter, window pane. What? Eddie had the opportunity for the merest glimpse of what lay beyond. He saw places which resembled the frost forests of a winter window pane. Fuck. No. Okay. 
He could not... Mm. There were mountains of glittering metal. He could not help thinking. Bring in your scrap. Beat... Mm. Beat the... Yeah, okay, beat the enemy, because obviously there was a war going on at the time. I don't know. Uh, stormy oceans where little frog-like sea folk played. Mm. Once he saw a crowd of grinning faces topping reptilian bodies, faces which beamed recognition on his landfic, as though awaiting him. It was as unbelievable as it was horrible, but there it was, happening. Mm. Yeah, well. Why didn't Eddie wake if it were only a dream? As Landvig gave him the ring and produced another for himself, your duty, he said, is merely to lock each doorway after I have passed through it. The doors cannot be locked from the inside, fortunately, and I, no, unfortunately, and if I were to wander far from the entrance, things, he savoured the, things, he savoured the word, things might escape out into our own world. He did not state their natures, but Eddie gathered from his tone that they were not very friendly. Mm. Are you from another world, Islandic? Islandic pointed to a frame. I'm going to enter this one now. Use your key. Eddie took off his ring, pushed the stone into the proper opening, and gave it a turn. The white panel disappeared. Before him was a lush jungle, a splash of green. Ferns popped, no, ferns popped spring-like over the frame's edges and hung swaying. As Lambert climbed over the frame's sill, as naturally as if crawling through a window, Eddie heard a weird, loud scream from the thicket, like a woman's cry. It echoed through the room. He looked at Islandvik, who smiled very faintly. Lock me in, the big man said. He was standing among the ferns. Come back at three o'clock, on the dot, and let me out. It's ten now. He pulled up a sleeve to show Eddie his wristwatch. Mm -hmm. oh, time flies. Anyway, um, Eddie jerked the ring from the frame. The white panel reappeared, sealing his landing behind it. He... Mm, was he really in another world? Eddie... Mm, yeah. Eddie tugged at the frame, and it slipped off its hook. It had been hanging like an ordinary picture. He replaced it on the wall. Now was his time to get out of this place. He made a dash for the entrance beyond the living room and stopped still. Why? Because he reached the door. Nope. Because when he reached the door, he heard sounds outside, unpleasant snuffling noises, and the sudden scrape of claws on the portal. Whatever was outside had heard him approaching, and the racket which it was making did not imply that it wanted to make friends. Eddie drew back from the door, then sidled back to it. He stooped to peer through the keyhole, his nostrils dilated at the fragrance of incense. He saw a flash of scaly green hide, the dull glint of a piggish eye, at the creature, mm, as the creature fretted before the door. He noticed short, sharp horns, also green, and long yellow fangs in a crocodilian maw. No chance of getting out, not this way. But what about the wind here? Yeah, what about the window? After all this time, what about the window? If he's gonna try and open it again, fuck. Just fucking smash it. Well, there were no windows, he discovered. Only the nailed one. Mm. Only the one now shut in his bedroom. He searched the kitchen drawers for a hammer and pried up the long spikes, then raised the window to look black to ah then raised the window to blackness. Mm. An air shaft, only blank cement wall and brickwork on all sides rising up. A square well three feet wide to a tiny hole of sky. There was a possibility that he could climb the air shaft, nudging his back upward an inch at a time with his feet braced on the walls. But if he fell, no, there might be a chance to escape later. Something less drastic than this. 
He shut the window and hammered back the nails, as Lamvik mustn't suspect he had tried to get out. Mm. He returned the hammer to its place, profoundly depressed. He was marooned in Atlanta. He was marooned in Aslanvik's house. Well, I think we're going to leave it at that, just because, you know, it's a good time to finish. I don't know how much time I've got left in yet. This is quite a long story. Uh, it's a slow burn, but, you know, it's also fairly interesting, I suppose. Okay, hasn't... Ooh. And the next story is called House of Hate by Alison V. Harding. Mm, her stories can be chilling. So maybe I'll read that next. Who knows? Who knows? All right, well. Um, no. Okay, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, we're going to leave it at that. So, I mean, yeah, Eddie's just, you know, not much happened in this episode, but a bit happened. Obviously, he's stuck in some sort of, you know, weird hell-like place. I don't know. Anyway, if you've watched to the end, thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying this story. Um, it's okay. It's okay. I hope the payoff is good. Oh, yes, and I hope you're having a wonderful Halloween, whatever you're doing. Um, I know Australia's like a few hours ahead. I like think Amer America's a few hours behind. I don't know. So, you know. Yeah, I don't know anything. Fuck. Alright, well, um. So, I'll see you for part five if you are still joining me at that stage. I hope you do. Um. I still look forward to finding out what happened. Mm. Thanks for watching.